At the end of 2019, while the world was still going about its business as usual, a city in China was on its last legs before a complete lockdown. On 29 December 2019, four cases with severe pneumonia were found in Wuhan, the capital city of the Hubei province in China. More cases were reported afterwards, and the city were engulfed by an epidemic within a few weeks. This triggered the Chinese government to make an unprecedented move, which was to put the entire city with 11 million people under a strict lockdown. The restricted access even covered the nearby area affecting 18 million residents in total. Despite the containment measures, it had been too late. The disease has since spread worldwide, leading to an ongoing pandemic caused by a novel coronavirus which was later officially named as COVID-19. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus. In the TED Talk in 2015, Bill Gates warned the future crisis would not be a nuclear disaster, but an epidemic on a global scale, as our systems are not in place to cope with one. A few years later, his warning had come true. On 31 December 2019, officials in Wuhan reported to the WHO office in China regarding a case of pneumonia with unknown cause. Just a few days later, a total of 44 cases with similar symptoms were identified in the same city. By then, the National Health Commission in China identified the new virus causing fever and flu-like symptoms as a novel coronavirus. On the 11th of January, the first confirmed death resulting from contracting the new virus was reported, a 61-year-old male resident in Wuhan. At that time, health officials could not identify the route of transmission as no cases of human-to-human -human transmission was confirmed. WHO was aware of the outbreak and monitored the situation through close contact with China. An emergency meeting was convened by WHO with the attendance of Chinese authorities to classify the emergency level of the outbreak on the 22nd of January. And it had yet to be declared as global emergency. Another meeting was held on the 28th of January with the presence of Chinese President Xi Jinping and WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus for update on the outbreak. The outbreak was declared a global emergency by the WHO on 30 January. By then, the death toll had surpassed 100, and the virus had spread beyond Wuhan to other parts of China and to at least 16 countries around the world. Globalization makes the world an interconnected place, where people get around quickly with few hindrances. And so does the virus. There is no conclusive evidence of the exact date of the initial outbreak in Wuhan. According to a study by Chinese researchers published in the Lancet Medical Journal, the first person being diagnosed with the virus was on 1 December 2019. In the meanwhile, a Harvard Medical School study showed that an abnormal increase of traffic in various hospitals in Wuhan in October through satellite images. Also, internet search trends during the same period suggested a surge in search terms associated with COVID-19 symptoms such as cough and diarrhea. As we all know by now, the virus spreads mainly through close contact as small droplets of the infected person get into opening of the body of healthy people such as mouth, nose, and eyes. The contaminated surfaces could be another route of transmission. Once contracting COVID-19, one may show symptoms within 1 to 14 days. Now assuming that the virus has scattered around in a much earlier date than the official report on 31 December, but it had yet to show obvious symptoms. 
with our lack of understanding about these microorganisms and how easy human-to-human -human transmission can happen, the virus could spread with an unconceivable pace. And it did just that. By the 28th of January 2020, the death toll hit 100. Some countries began to evacuate their citizens from Wuhan while advising their people to limit their travel to China. Wuhan and its province Hubei were under strict lockdown, while wearing masks in public was made mandatory in some cities in China. The 10th of February marked the first 1,000 deaths, while more countries got their first case, but the epidemic was still mainly in China. The WHO announced that the number of new cases in China was stabilizing, but it was uncertain whether this was the peak of the outbreak. On the 20th of March, the world recorded its 10,000th death because of COVID-19. By then, the world's concerns turned to Europe, the continent with half of the total COVID fatalities. The UK implemented a nationwide lockdown four days later. The 100,000 death toll was soon reached on the 9th of April. The US President Donald Trump speculated a figure of 100,000 deaths in the US alone, but denied criticism on how his administration did not react in time to slow down the pandemic. Little did he know, it was just the beginning. Another grim milestone was hit on the 29th of September, when the COVID deaths worldwide exceeded 1 million. Over time, the death toll just accelerated its speed due to the surge in new cases. On 15 January 2021, the global deaths from COVID-19 surpassed 2 million. This figure is not even the real death toll as many people might have contracted the virus and passed away without knowing its cause, especially during the initial stage of the pandemic and in countries without adequate testing facilities. There is simply no word to clearly describe the grief and pain of friends and families of those who fought a great battle against a virus and lost to it, The 1 million COVID-19 cases were announced on the 2nd of April 2020. This was followed by 10 million cases on the 28th of June. To the world's dismay, the 100 million milestone was hit in just half a year later, on the 26th of January 2021. One in every 76 persons in the world now carries the virus. The consequences of such pandemic are unimaginable. They go beyond the loss of life and leave permanent marks on every single life on Earth. Death is a dreadful concept, but to many people, financial hardship could be as terrifying. All of us are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, but the level of impact depends on our social status and background, Balsam can work from home and maintain social distancing, many others must work in a high-risk environment, getting exposed to the risk of contracting the virus. Some workers with flu symptoms have to remain at work till they test positive for COVID-19. The World Bank estimated around 40 to 60 million people would fall into extreme poverty due to COVID-19. But the figure will need to be revised given the current development of the pandemic, the World Food Programme estimated around 250 million people would suffer from acute hunger by end of 2020. The vulnerable population are more prone to COVID infection as much as any other health threats. They are less likely to receive testing and treatment once getting infected. Although most can recover completely from COVID-19, some experience long-term effects on their health. I am unable to be out of bed for more than three hours at a stretch, my arms and legs are permanently fizzing, as if injected with Szechuan peppercorns, I have ringing in the ears, intermittent brain fog, palpitations, and dramatic mood swings. This was mentioned by Paul Garner, a professor of epidemiology at Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, on his 95th day after the onset of symptoms. Recent survey on patients who had recovered from COVID-19 also describes similar complaints. The virus can leave lingering effects with various symptoms such as fatigue, headache, chest pain, sleep problem, hair loss and so on. 
It can cause blood clots and damages to critical organ including heart, lungs, and brain. Those who recover from COVID-19 are more likely to develop depression and anxiety later. It will take time to research on any other effects on human health after recovery. The mental health effect does not limit within COVID-19 patients. Their friends and families are constantly in fear of losing their loved ones. Many people are showing symptoms of stress and anxiety after being subjected to social isolation, unemployment, life disruption and fear of illness. More calls are being made to helpline from young people with symptoms of anxiety. People with mental disorders even have higher risk of infection, and their bodies will have more severe damages once infected. The current outbreak has left no country and territory untouched. Every country has their share of the economic consequence of the pandemic. The direct cost of healthcare system, unproductive businesses, low employment rate and costly lockdowns have brought about economic decline, which can be described as the worst since the Great Depression. According to the International Monetary Fund, the global economy was estimated to shrink by 4.4% in 2020. China was the only major economy having positive GDP growth. Hospitality sector is expected to take a long while before recovering completely. Despite suffering from all the pains and losses, this battle still must be fought. This is when we need our heroes the most, the heroes without capes. They come from different races, nationalities, and age groups, but they have one common mission, it is to save lives. They were there to save the day in the past pandemics. This time is no exception. Working on the front line, healthcare workers are constantly exposed to stress and fear of getting infected. They are also isolated from their families and the society, to certain extent. A survey conducted in 34 hospitals in China showed most healthcare workers were under distress, while many reported having insomnia and symptoms of depression. Research also suggested that the lack of staff, heavy workload, lack of personal protective equipment and beds are among the challenges faced by nurses during the pandemic. In 2021, the International Labor Organization reported 10% of the COVID cases in the world are health care workers. They are putting their life on the line to save millions of lives. But oddly enough, they were increasingly becoming victims of violence and harassment for what they do. Discrimination against health care workers resulting from people's fear of contracting the virus happened in many places in the world. We're trying to do the right thing and we don't need to get attacked. It's not fair to get attacked. In December 2020, the UK government announced the discovery of a new variant of COVID-19 which is 30% to 80% more transmissible. This signifies a prolonged battle with no end in sight, where our healthcare workers are put to test once again. In the meanwhile, they are facing stress both in their shifts and outside of their works, coping with childcare, discrimination, and isolation. They are exhausted but few hear their voices. The hero label did not ease their burdens. What they need more is the combined effort of everyone in the community. Wear your mask, keep a safe distance, and stay home if possible. There is no doubt this is one of the most challenging battle against public health threat that the world has ever faced. And this battle must be won.